Buffaloes. Good. Here come. Uh, Welcome to our today. presentation today. We thank you for all being attentive and paying attention. Would like to thank Michael for his great work on our presentation board today. Michael, thank you. Hey, Michael. As we were thinking about this, I was walking back to camp last week, and I ran into these three guys. They, they looked a little bit like Helaman's warriors to me, but they said, you really need to focus on the youth and the strength of their physical strength, mental strength, and spiritual strength. So taking that lead, we came up with wanting to talk about physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. These are principles that were true in the early 1900s with Baden-Powell. And brothers and sisters, more true today and more needed today than ever. I will first speak on exercise and nutrition. When we talk about our Cub Scouts, the first thing we want to do is make sure those Cub Scouts learn how to exercise, learn to get away from the TV, to get away from the Xbox. They might have added the game playing belt loop, but that doesn't mean 90% of their time should be doing that. You're going to teach them, or you want to teach them, the principle of exercise when they're young. So when they get to be old, they don't look worse than we do. Right, Buffalo? Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> teach them young, and they'll return to it or stay with it their whole life. Nutrition is something I think is critically important with youth today. I don't know how many of the kids, I know my kids from high school running off to school, and they grabbed a candy bar or a, snook, or a granola bar out of the house, and that was breakfast. Doesn't work very well. So I went to a source. I went to the CDC. They said the benefits of eating healthy are proper nutrition promotes optimal growth and development of children. We need to start with that. We need to help them. We need to encourage them. Tell them to leave the candy home from their scouting trips. Healthy eating prevents high cholesterol. How many here have high cholesterol? Okay, very good, I do. We need to take care of that. Blood pressure, we need to teach them when they're young. Healthy eating also helps reduce obesity. We're seeing that more and more in youth. That's, that's a terrible trend. They're not supposed to be obese until they get my age. We need to help them. We need to keep them going. We need to help them when all they're doing. Consequences of poor diet is when they get older, poor health. But the sad part is today we're seeing that when they're 15 and 16 years old. This year, an episode of The Biggest Loser is with teenagers. And the biggest reason for that is not to have them lose weight as much as to teach them how to eat, how to have proper nutrition, so they can have a helpful, excuse me, a healthy life going forward. Sports. As young boys become older, get into their teenage years, they desire to participate in sports, some of them. And uh, we're talking not just watching sports, which many of us will be doing tomorrow night, but participating in sports. And some of the excellent benefits of sports are that uh, they build strength. Um, as you participate in any exercise or physical activity, it builds your body. You tone your muscles. You build coordination, and not just in your thumbs. And uh, you increase your stamina and endurance. And research shows that sports involvement increases math skills in youth. It also develops leadership qualities and team unity, spirit, the ability to work in a team, things that we all want to develop in our young men. Exposing youth to winning and losing. Sometimes that's a hard thing for our young people. I've got kids in that age range, and it's a real hard thing for them. It also helps build social skills, interaction with the other youth. And many times, we participate in sports with people we don't know, and that helps build those social interactions. Sleep. As they get older, into those venturing age years, they want to stay up later. They get a later curfew. They want to go out, stay out late. It becomes harder and harder. Some of the negative effects of not getting enough sleep it affects the body and the mind. According to the Harvard School of Medicine and the uh, Division of Sleep Medicine, they found that the body regulates and requires sleep in much the same way as eating, drinking, and breathing. And teenagers or children between the ages of 11 and 17 require eight to nine hours of sleep a night in order to properly regulate their body functions. Those who get the appropriate amount of sleep live longer healthier lives. Sleep 
lowers blood pressure. It can improve memory and cognitive function, helps control body weight, reduces the chance of diabetes. It also helps them to live longer, healthier lives. And we talk about longer, healthier lives in all of these things, exercise, nutrition, sports, and sleep. We're talking about changing habits to change lives, not just a one-time thing. We want them to change their habits to live a healthier lifestyle. Second part of our pie is mentally awake. What does that really mean, mentally awake? Um, it can mean different things to different people. Um, it begins with the Cub Scouts with time management. Uh, as you remember, as men taking your young cubs to, to pack night or a scout, they've got to be precise, they've got to be on time, they've got to be specific with their time or you're going to lose them. You've got kids running around everywhere and that's chaos. How important is time in an organized camp? Uh, it's very, very important. Um, time management works, you're on a schedule to where you don't have the excuse if you manage your time well, well, I don't have time to do that. I mean, it's obvious by the large group here that we've all made time to come to Wood Badge. Uh, time is critical, time is precious. And uh, we instill this in our youth, starting with the Cub Scouts and moving into the Boy Scouts. Uh, time is important also. Uh, Word of Wisdom plays a key role in also being uh, physically strong. Uh, Word of Wisdom will help us keep our minds clear, keep our minds on track, keep our goals fresh. And as we as leaders teach our young men what is important for them or show them or lead them or guide them, coach them or mentor them, <coughs> and we can help them um, show them, testify to them the promises of the word of wisdom in the, in the scriptures that will help us, help our youth, and our youth will help our their youth when they become leaders themselves. Thank you, Happy. Brother Baden Powell said, this is not a club or a Sunday school class, but this is a, a school of the woods. And us as leaders, we get the opportunity when boys enter varsity scouting to expose them to a whole new set of skills, climbing, rappelling, ascending, even subterranean exploration through caves. And, and we get to light their fires for learning these new skills, while at the same time, they're going through public education. Ninth grade comes around, college transcripts. They start caring about what the grades are. But do our young men really know that? I know my son Adam didn't catch the vision till 10th grade. Ninth grade was a blur of nothingness as far as success goes. And you may know other young men the same way. But the young men follow our examples. Is it important to us? Is higher education, is is that advanced learning in all the aspects of life, that zest, that thrill, do we exude that and do our boys pick up on that and do, do they gain a greater care for their education as a result of us? baden Powell also said, the boys follow the Scoutmaster's example, no doubt about it. Then they turn 16 and we get into a positive attitude. And what I mean by that is in the Scout law it says a Scout is cheerful. A lot of 16-year-olds aren't cheerful. And if you look at the, uh, at the statistics, more young men take their lives by committing suicide in those years of venture scouting, 16 to 18. That's sad. That's sad when you think that our venturing program is designed to teach those boys self-esteem, to let them uh, conquer mountains, conquer things they've never done so they feel good about themselves, and that they have that reassurance from their leaders that they're on track. So think about it, mentally awake, what is our goal? We want these boys all through scouting to develop strong social skills, to be self-educated and have a really strong work ethic. Thanks. We'll now focus on morally straight. I'd like each of you just to think, just for a very brief moment, how you feel about personal prayer. How you feel about personal scripture study. There's been, uh, we've quoted some studies here. There was a study done by some LDS researchers that found that young people that are heavily involved in private, private, personal 
devotion to God will more likely, there's a high likelihood that they will stay committed members of the church for the rest of their lives. So can you imagine for a moment a little Cub Scout searching for his neckerchief as he's going to a Cub meeting and he can't find it. And he gets down on his knees because he's been taught to do so. And he pleads with Heavenly Father, where is my neckerchief? And Heavenly Father begins to tutor him in the ways of God. And he comes to know that there really is a God. Imagine a scout who doesn't feel like he's fitting in in junior high. And imagine him actually getting down on his knees and asking the God of heaven if he will show him the way. And in doing that, Heavenly Father maybe inspires him to look for another young man that's suffering worse than him. Can you imagine youth growing up learning in their own lives that God is truly there for them. The same with scripture study. Here we have words of men that testify that they have actually seen God with their own eyes. And then they put those words in print. And at first for our Cub Scouts, they're just uh, black letters on white pages. But eventually as they get older, we hope that those black words become principles that they connect to their hearts, and they begin to live with all of their heart. What's amazing, just these two things will empower them spiritually, and can you imagine the impact it will have on their mental and their physical lives? The Savior of the world declared, and it is my purpose to provide for my saints, for all things are mine. We help the Savior accomplish His purpose through service. When we serve each other, we serve our Father in Heaven. Love of God is a motivation for love of neighbor. Service is also a sign of our devotion. When we serve, service exemplifies the two great commandments. Chastity and virtue, as taught in the Book of Mormon, are the most dear and precious of all things. Joseph of Egypt is an unequaled example of faith, chastity, and personal purity. When tempted by Potiphar's wife, he asked, how can I do this great weakness and sin against God? Reuben, who was the rightful heir, lost his birthright through transgressing the law of chastity. Joseph, as firstborn of Israel's second wife, became that heir. Our purpose is to build the kingdom of God. We testified in sacred places that we will give all that we have to the building up of the kingdom of God. Baden Powell indicated that one of the one of the Objectives of scouting is to build the kingdom of God. Doing these three things, we build boys. We build homes. We build wards. We build stakes. Of this we testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 amen.